The Back 855 is a popular controller for mid-range powered electric vehicles. I use the older Back 800 version on my BBS HD and CYC e-bike conversions. I was contacted recently by a few people that have had problems with water ingress, including one guy in Alaska, and they wanted to know how I'd prevent this kind of damage on my bikes. This video will describe where and how the water damage can occur and how to go about preventing it. My own back 800 installations have been through two Canadian winters with all the snow and stuff that that entails and I've not run into water ingress problems with my controllers. The main workings of the back 855 are encased in potting compound. The unit itself carries an IP67 rating. You can see the phase and battery wires running straight into the compound at the back. This 24 pin JST connector for the main harness though is not IP67. It's a weakness with the design and if it's not addressed properly when you build your e-bike or vehicle, water ingress can and does lead to controller malfunction and eventual failure. The best way to prevent water damage is to use layers of protection to divert water away and to physically protect the harness connection. It's a combination of techniques that leads to the waterproofing rather than one individual technique on its own. The first layer for me is dielectric grease and it's a really really useful layer of protection that often gets overlooked. In many ways this is possibly the most important thing you can do with this connector. You can get this kind of stuff in any automotive place and a smear of it on the end of the connector before you plug it in is all you're going to need. It's a silicone based grease also called tune up grease and it repels moisture and it protects the electrical components against water ingress. It is worth noting that the grease itself does not conduct electricity so you should not apply it directly to the male or female pins or the surfaces that will carry any actual connection. So just a smear all around the edges when you plug it in and that will keep moisture out of that connection. When you have so many wires exiting a harness it's difficult to make a waterproof seal with shrink wrap. If water gets on the wires and runs along them, then eventually moisture is going to get down into this connector part at the end. It will lead to corrosion of the pins, intermittent problems and eventual failure. And I've seen lots of photos of green looking harness pins. If you're starting to get discoloration on the pins, then it's very likely moisture that is causing this. You can fix the problem for good with either hot glue gun or probably better, some automotive grade silicone. And I use this stuff, comes in a sealable tube. And all you're really looking to do is to squirt it down in the ends of the harness, anywhere where you think some moisture or water might get in and squish it around to make a good seal. And the way I like to do it is to do it once you've got it on the bike and all the wires are nicely routed in the directions you want them to go. And then you can fill in any remaining gaps that there might be. When you mount the controller, try to imagine the direction the water will be flowing along as it's accumulated. You can then use zip ties to arrange your wiring so that the moisture can drip to the ground rather than travel backwards towards the controller. And these same zip ties will also secure these wires and prevent them from being pulled on and potentially damaging the wiring loom through accidental bump and vibration. And I have had these pull loose of this connector before, so it's definitely worth making sure that this is well protected. The JST connection is not particularly strong. The LED is also vulnerable to damage, so it's really important to physically protect this area. I design, manufacture and sell a whole range of different styles and mounts for the Back 800 and 855 that will allow you to waterproof and protect your controller. They cover all different mounting locations on two frames, from on the top tube to the bottom tube to the seat tube, flat locations as well, and some for the CYC X1 motor owners. I offer a range of colours and often customise the look as per request. Obviously you're under no obligation to use any of my stuff, but whatever you do use should look to provide a similar level of physical protection for the connector. My mounts keep bulk water, dirt and debris well away from the JST connector. They also keep the elements from degrading the shrink wrapping and dielectric grease. I use a bead of silicone on all the places where the back sits in the mount and where the cover plate bolts on. There's a window at the back for the LED so you can verify it is powered on or if it's flashing any error codes. You can also seal up the back of these mounts with silicone or something else depending on the conditions where you ride. But I've not done this with my own mounts and it's been through two winters no problems. So to sum up, it's not one individual technique that will keep out the water. It's multiple layers that work together to prevent water ingress and damage. 
The outer mount body provides physical protection and sheds the vast majority of bulk water. The smart routing of wires prevents that water running along them and the dielectric grease and silicone on the harness stops anything else. If you like this video, consider sharing it and subscribing to the channel. If anyone else has any tips and tricks for protection of the Back 855, let me know in the comments as there are always many ways to achieve a goal. Cheers.